Okay, welcome to Statistics course. This is DCRT 734 class. Again, this lecture, we're going to continue with our hypothesis testing. In the previous lecture, we discussed about a hypothesis testing for the mean using a large sample. When we say a large sample, the, it means the sample is greater than or equal to 30. So in this lecture, we are going to use a, a small sample. Now, when we are using a large sample, our test statistics is z-score. We look for the z-test. When we are using small sample with a sample less than 30, we use the t-test. So our main objective here, we're going to find the critical values in a t-distribution. Actually, it's the same steps of finding the critical value when we are using the large sample, the z-test. So use the t-test to test a mean, and also we're going to use the technology to find the p-values and use them with a the t-test to test the population mean also. So first we start with finding critical values in a t-distribution. So the first step is to identify the level of significance, which normally is given to us, the alpha. Then second step, the degree of freedom. So here we are going to use the t-table. In a t-table, we need a degree of freedom, which is normally the sample size minus one. The sample size should be less than 30 always. So identify the degree of freedom, df, which is n minus one. Then we can find the critical values using the t-table in the row with n minus one degree of freedom. So in the row, we we'll see degree of freedom. The again is sample size minus one. If the hypothesis test is left tail, then we use the one tail alpha or significance level, which is the column with the negative sign. Now, if it's a right tail, we use the one tail alpha, the column with again positive sign. Then if it's two tail, we use the two tails alpha column with a negative and a positive sign. So normally in the t-table, we we'll see these three rows together and columns and also the degree of freedoms. So first we start with an example. How do we find a critical value for t or t distribution? So first find a critical value t o for the left tail test given alpha is 0 0.05 and is 21. So this means our degree of freedom will be 20. So first we find the degree of freedom, which is n minus one, 21 minus one, 20. Then we look at alpha equal to 0 0.05 in one tail alpha column. Why? Because left tail test given. So we go, because the test is left tail, the critical value is negative. So we go to again the T table, we look at the degree of freedom row 20, then we look at the alpha is 0 0.05, and it's in one tail alpha column. So now the second question says find the critical value, values TO and negative TO for two test given alpha 0 0.05 and n is 26. So first thing again, we find the degree of freedom, which is 26 minus one is 25. The next step, we look at alpha equal to 0 0.05, but this time in the two tail alpha column. So we can see the previous question is left, left tail test. So after we find the degree of freedom, we we'll look for our alpha is 0 0.05. So we we'll look at alpha is 0 0.05 in one tail alpha column. And since it's left tail test, the Z value will be negative. Now, if it's a right tail, it will be positive. Now they say we should find two tail. So the same step, find the degree of freedom, then look for the alpha 0 0.05, but this time at two tail alpha column and here the answer will be 2.060 but since we have two tail to be both left and right 
So we have positive and negative value. Left is negative value, right is positive. And here we say because the test is two tail, one critical value is negative and one is positive. Again, here we are learning how to use the T distribution table. When you look at the T table, you look at the degree of freedom. Then based on the alpha given, you look at the alpha. And also we have three options. Either is a left tail, right tail, and two tail. Right tail always the answer is positive. Left tail always the answer is negative. Two tail we get both negative and positive answer. So now we do the T test for population mean. Remember again, the reason why we are doing the T test because the sample size is less than 30. And also the standard deviation of the population is unknown. So if we do T test for a mean, which is a, a statistical test for a population mean. Now the T test can be used again when the population is normal or nearly normal and the standard deviation is unknown. And the reason why when we are looking for the, the T statistics, we don't need a standard deviation. And also most important, the sample size have to be less than 30. If the sample size is equal or greater than 30, we cannot use T test. And then the test statistic, again, is the sample mean. And this time the T equal to we can see we have the sample mean minus population mean over S. Again, this is not a population, but rather, again, the sample standard deviation divided by square root of the sample size. The formula is almost the same as the Z test, but we use the T test when we don't know the population standard deviation, and also the sample size is less than 30. So the degree of freedom, n minus one. The reason why we need degree of freedom, again, when we go to the T table, we have to identify the degree of freedom in order to find the right value. So this will be in words and also in symbols. This is the whole process of hypothesis testing using T tests when the sample size is less than 30. Population sample, we don't know. So first we need to state the claim mathematically and verbally, identify the null and also the alternative hypothesis. So here we state the HO and HA. Then we specify the level of significance that's identified the alpha. But this time T testing, so we also need to identify the degree of freedom and sketch the sample distribution. The degree of freedom is the sample size minus one. Then we use the T table. So determine any critical values using the T-table. Then after we use the T-table to get the critical value, we know the critical value is the line, the boundary between rejection and non-rejection line. So here we should be able to determine any rejection regions. Then we find the standardized test statistic, which will be this, the T-test to be the sample mean minus population mean over the standard deviation for sample divided by square root of sample size. Then after we get a T, we go to the table to go and get a p-value, same step as Z. So when we get a p-value, then we can make a decision harder to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So here we say that if the T is in a rejection region, then we reject HO, otherwise we fail to reject HO. Then we need to interpret a decision in the context of the original claim. So let's see an example here. Here we say a used car dealer says that the mean price of 2,500 pilot LX is at least $23,900. You suspected this claim is incorrect and you find that the random sample of 14 similar vehicles. Now we can see the sample size is less than 30. 14 similar vehicles as a mean price of 23,000 and a standard deviation of 1,130. So you give us the sample size standard deviation. 
Now, here we say, is there enough evidence to reject the dealer's claim at alpha equal to 0 0.05, assuming population is normally distributed? So we state our HO and HA. Remember, they said it's less than 23,900. So HO will be greater than or equal to 23,900 because the question we can see the claim. The use car dealer says that the mean price of 2,500 on that pilot LS is at least uh, 23,900. So that's why we have our HO should be at least so greater than or equal to 23,900. So HA will be opposite, 23,900 lesser, less 23,900. The alpha value is already given, which is 0 0.05. The degree of freedom will be the sample size, which is 14 minus one. So we have 13. Now we need a rejection area. So here we know that it's only left tail. So that's why it's negative, left tail. If HA is less than 23,900, left tail. So we go to the T, this T table. The degree of freedom is 13. We go to the left tail column with 0 0.05 alpha. And the answer was negative 1.771 from the table. Now, next step, we find the T statistics. So the T will be X bar, which is given to us the sample mean 2300 minus the population mean 2300 now over the standard deviation for the sample, which is given to be 1113. The sample size is 14, so divided by square root of 14. When we do this, we get 3.026. Then here we reject HO, the reason why we go to the table to go and find the p-value. The p-value is supposed to be less than or equal to alpha, then we reject it, and that's what happened. If it's greater than alpha value, alpha, alpha value then we're going to accept or fail to reject HO. So our decision here said at least 0 0.05 level of significance, there's enough evidence to reject the claim that the mean price of 2005 on that pilot LS is at least 23,900. So we we'll reject H again. Let's try another example again. An industrial company claims that the mean pH level of a water in a nearby river is 6.8. This is the claim. You randomly select 19 water samples. So we have a sample of 19 and measure the pH of each. The sample mean and the standard deviation of the sample is 6.7 and 0.24 for the standard deviation of the sample. Now, the question is, is there enough evidence to reject the company's claim? The company's claim said the pH level of the water in nearby river is 6.8. So assuming the population is normally distributed. So we're going to have a two-way because the question say is 6.8. So HA will be is not 6.8. Alpha is given. Degree of freedom, we know the sample size is 19. 19 minus 1 is 18. So I'm going to draw the rejection. Now, based on the degree of freedom and 0 0.05, the alpha, we were able to get 2.101. But it will be negative and positive because it's two-way. So after this, we find the test statistics, which is the T. The sample mean is given, population mean is given, Standard deviation of the sample is given. We know the sample size. So if we do our calculation, we get negative 1.816. From the T value, we can find the P. And here they say we fail to reject HO because when we look for the, the P value, it will be greater than 0 0.05. So we only reject HO if the P value we get is less than or equal to 0 0.05. But if it's greater than 0 0.05, which is the alpha, if it's greater than alpha value, then we fail to reject. So here we say at a 0 0.05 level of significance, 
there is not enough evidence to reject the claim that the mean pH is 6.8. So we fail to reject, which means we accept it. Another example given here, uh, here we say the American Automobile Association claims that the mean daily meal cost for a family of four travel on vacation in Florida is $118. Now the random sample of 11 such families has a mean daily meal cost of $128 with a standard deviation of 20. Is there enough evidence to reject a claim at alpha equal to 0 0.1? One zero. First, we look at the sample size, and based on this, the sample size is 11, so we have to use the t-test. So we state our claim. We know they say the average is one eight eight one dot one eighteen dollars. So it will be two way, not equal to one eighteen. So we can use our TI eighty three eighty four calculator or even 89 calculator TI. So we set up again for some, I don't have my TI calculator here, but normally we go to the, we select the t-test, then we set our input in. And then when we click the, to calculate, it will draw the diagram for us. And based on this, we can make our decision. The P is given. P is 0 0.1664. Now, since 0 0.1664 is greater than 0 0.10, then we are going to fail to reject HO. And this will be the conclusion of our lectures. Again, this lecture, we consider the steps of hypothesis testing, whether small or large sample, is the same. The difference is what type of test statistics we're going to use. Now, if the sample size is less than 30, we use t-test. Now, t-test, based on the t-table, we need, we need a degree of freedom value, which is the sample size minus one. Then, based on the alpha value, we can check if it's left tail, right tail, or two tails. Then, we, if, we, if we know those two information, again, we can get the p-value. Then we also need to find a t, t statistic test, which is the sample mean minus population mean over the sample standard deviation over square, square root of the sample size. So you can see that when the sample size is very small and we are doing t tests, we don't need the population standard deviation. So again, wish everybody the best and see you in the next lecture. Thank you.